when you're looking at the logic, the first thing that the digital relays do is they're always comparing. They're comparing their analog signals to a setting. So when you uh, and a, compar a comparator is often described as a triangle with an input on the top and a set point on the bottom. So if the line on the top is greater than whatever the line on the bottom is, then it's going to give you a one or a zero output, so on or off. So the set point is obviously a number that somebody types into the relay, but the scaled input is goes through an analog to digital converter. So if you have five amps going into the relay, there's an analog to digital converter that converts that five amp analog signal into a five amp digital signal. And then uh, if five amps happens to be greater than the set point, then the output of this comparator will be a one. If five amps is lower than the set point, then the output of this comparator will be a zero. And so it's either on or off. And that comparator will use a setting such as in this, this is a GE87 relay. And so if you wanted to look at the line pickup operation, you would that line pickup would be the setting in the scaled input on the comparator. Or sorry, the setting, the set point in the comparator. That was a GE relay. You can see that they use codes like 87L or stub bus op or line pickup or power swing or phase TOC1 pickup. So those are the all of the things that you can choose in a GE relay. But if you go to a Schweitzer relay, for example, they don't use long words like that. They typically shorten it up so that you would look for the phase TOC1 pickup in the GE relay would be the 51P1 on the Schweitzer relay. If you aren't familiar with the terminology for every single relay that's out there, you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what elements, labels that you're looking for and what they mean. Then you can have timers. You can have a time on delay and a time off delay timer. The time on delay is normally a pickup timing. So whenever that input turns on, then the timer starts. And once that timer expires, then the time on delay will turn to a, a one. A time off delay is as if that when that input goes away, the off delay timer starts. And then when the time timer expires, it'll send the time off delay input out. And those inputs trigger timing actions. And all digital relays use some form of logic to control outputs that can be broken down into controls that are called gates. So you can have an AND gate, an OR gate, a NAND gate, a NOR gate, an X ON gate, or an X OFF gate. Only the first two are typically used. You typically only have AND and OR gates. And if you look on the diagram on the right-hand side, that is your traditional logic diagram that you would find in a... Uh, this is, comes out of a Schweitzer manual, but this is traditionally what a logic diagram looks like. It can be pretty scary. That diagram on the right, that's, uh, that's a little scary if you've never done it before. You can see that you have IA, that's your analog signal on the very top comparator there, and then the setting is 51, or sorry, 50P1P, and that goes into a comparator, which is the triangle, and then it comes out of the triangle. If it turns one, it's going to go into that first little uh, symbol with the, that kind of looks like an arrowhead, and that's what's called an OR gate. It comes out of the OR gate and it goes directly to 50P1. So if that OR gate output ever turns to 1, then that means that 50P1 will also be on. And it also goes into an AND gate. An AND gate has got a flat end on the left-hand side. So what does all that mean? If you've never seen a logic diagram or you know, you're not used to this way of drawing a diagram, you can break everything down into their basic signals. So if you have an AND gate, an AND gate means all of the inputs must be on to turn it on, to turn the output of that AND gate on. And whenever you see an AND gate, if you don't, if if you want to translate it into something that you should understand, you can always replace those inputs with two contacts in series or three contacts in series, because that is the same thing electrically. An AND gate is two contacts in series. And so you can see that the symbols can be slightly different. Sometimes they put AND in the, in the center of the symbol or they put an ampersand symbol. And if you look at that matrix, you can see all the combinations that'll, that have to happen in order to turn that on. So both the top uh, matrix 
you have both inputs on, so the AND gate equals output equals on. And then if you look below it, I have the top input on, and because they're not both on, the AND gate output will be off. When you're talking about OR gates, this is the most common gate that you have in logic. An OR gate, if you don't, if you want to understand how it works or you want to translate the, uh, the output logic from something you don't understand into something you do understand, then you want to put two contacts in parallel. And so with an OR gate, if any input is on, the output of the AND gate, or sorry, the output of the OR gate is on. NAND gates are the opposite of an AND gate, and they can be replaced by two normally contact, normally closed contacts in parallel. Now the key here is, is you see that little circle that's coming out of the NAND gate? That is, that's the symbol for NAND gate, but that little symbol means not. So that means if you're norm, when, if you ever see a circle in a logic diagram, that means that it's the opposite of what the input to that circle is. And that's an important thing. NOR gates are two normally closed contacts in series. It's not a common thing, so I'm not going to go over that. 